Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Integrated Math 2. In today's episode, we will be discussing Chapter 8.2.2, which is the area of regular polygons. Now, up until now, all we've been able to figure out the area of is rectangles, squares, and triangles. But if we have a shape here, like this hexagon here, and it's going to be a regular hexagon whenever we're finding the areas of, of these polygons, they're going to be regular. Um, there's a couple ways you can go about this. I'm going to show you the long method first, and then afterwards I'll show you a shortcut that, uh, that, that will involve uh, understanding a formula. Uh, but basically, uh, we learned in the last example, in the last video, that, uh, that we could figure out easily the number of angles or the total angle sum of, a of, of any type of polygon. That's going to play a significant role because what that allows us to do is it allows us to divide this hexagon out into into a triangle like this and I apologize for the for the bad line here but uh, but if I was to if I was to separate this polygon this hexagon out into a bunch of little mini triangles I would have a total of one two three four five six total triangles that I could then add up and as long as I found the area of one of the triangles I could just multiply by six to find the total area now that contrasts a little bit from the last type of triangle we drew. Now in, in, in the last example, we drew triangles that always stemmed from one vertex, and that was really to find the total angle sum. That was to find the total angle sum of the, of the polygon. But uh, now we're actually going to find the area. So, so this, these two shapes are somewhat related, but to find the area, we're actually going to split all of our triangles from the center. To find the total angles, we'll split all of the triangles from one vertex. So hopefully that's not too confusing uh, for you. But, uh, but actually, but that idea will come up here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find out the total angle sum of this hexagon. So how do I do that? Well, that's going to be, so my total sum is going to be n minus 2 times 180. We learned that in the last video. So in the context of this problem, n would be 6, so 6 minus 2 times 180. And that's going to be 4 times 180, which is going to get me 720. 720 is the total angle sum of every angle inside this hexagon. Problem is, I don't want every single angle. I just want one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that by 6 to get only one of the angles. Now, 720 divided by 6 happens to be 120 degrees. That is what one angle value is worth. So what that tells me is that tells me that this angle here, this angle here in total is 120. Now actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to paste over that triangle just so we can see the process here. I'm going to paste over that triangle real quick like that. And again, that entire angle is 120 degrees. Now again, from the center, I'm going to go and draw a triangle out. Now when I draw a line coming from this center, it's going to intersect with this vertex in a very special way just like it's going to intersect with this vertex in a very special way. And I think you guys are already going to kind of see how this goes. This 120 is no longer 120, but rather he is 60 degrees. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something even more complicated. From that same center, I'm going to draw this thing a vertical line down. Why am I doing that? Because remember, a triangle's area, the area of a triangle is one half base times, whoops, times height. Now the base I already know, the base is 8, right, in the context of this problem. The height is what this vertical red line is. I just have to figure out how much this is. Well, how do I do that? Well, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a couple of properties. This vertical red line here does two things. One, it splits this angle. It gives me the measure of this angle implicitly, but it also gives me the measure of this horizontal side right here. I'm going to break this thing out and I'm going to draw this triangle down here. Now remember, the entire base was 8, but this vertical line will cut that base in a very special way. It will cut it in half, giving me 4. Making this angle here 60, and since this 
since this vertical side here not only cuts this base in half, but it cuts it in a perpendicular way, we are now back to last week's stuff. We have a, we have a very special type of right triangle here where this angle is 90, this base angle is 60, making this top angle none other than 30 degrees, giving us a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. How does this play a role? Well, what it does is it allows me to solve for the height really fast. The height is opposite the 60, making it the medium side. So what I get is a height of 4 rad 3. So the area of this triangle here is going to be area equals 1 half base, which in this case, I'm actually going to go and call him 8 for the entire triangle. 1 half base, which is 8, and then the height of that entire triangle is the 4 rad 3. So these guys are going to cancel out, giving me 4. So that gives me 16 rad 3. That's the area of one of the triangles. But remember, I don't want the area of one of the triangles. I want the area of the hexagon. So how many triangles were inside this hexagon one more time? Let's go and draw a bunch of lines that go across the center. We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 triangles. So I multiply that by 6, and I get 96 root 3 as my area. So again, let me take you through what I did. So I drew a line that intersected down. Well, first, actually, I found the total sum of the angles of the hexagon. And then I found one angle of the hexagon. I cut that angle in half using this diagonal red line which touched, which touched the vertex. And then my vertical line down created my 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And then I used a 30, 60, 90 right triangle property to find the height, found the area of the triangle, multiplied by how many triangles I had, and ended up getting my answer. Okay, let me upload another example here real quick. In this example, we'll be dealing with a regular pentagon. And in this example, we're going to want a calculator set to degree mode. Uh, so because uh, we're not going to get a special right triangle this time. And so we're going to want to uh, to use some uh, some old friends are going to make their triumphant returns in this particular problem here. So uh, so just hang in there. It's going to be a little complicated. It's going to be a little threatening, but I know you can handle it. So from here, the first thing we're going to do is I need to find out the total angles. Why do I need to do that? It's because at some point I'm going to get a triangle here. I'm going to get a triangle here at some point, And I'm going to need to use the triangle's angular properties to figure out the height of the triangle, this vertical line here. So let's go and find out the total angle sum. Well, the total angles, well, that's going to be n minus 2 times 180. So that's 5 minus 2 times 180. And that's going to get me 540. But I only want one of the angles. So one angle is going to be 540 over 5, which is going to be 108. So from here, this entire thing is 108. But remember, this, this line here that goes from the center and hits the vertex of this angle is always going to cut that angle in half. So what this angle really is, this darkened red on the bottom here is really half of the 108, which is 54. And then this vertical line, red line here, is going to come down and split this guy in half, forming a 90 degree angle. So let's go and make this triangle a little bit larger. That way we can see it better. The new measurements here are going to be 54 degrees a right angle, and instead of 15, it's going to be 7.5. And again, what am I solving for? I'm solving for the height of this triangle. And why am I doing that? It's because a triangle, a triangle's area is 1 half base times height. Now, we already have the base, just like last time. It's the area of the triangle is equal to 1 half times 15 times whatever that height is. Now, that height is going to be harder to find this time because 
this is not a special right triangle anymore. 54 degrees here doesn't help me on a special right triangle. So what I have to do is I have to go back to some old friends. And I have to understand that what I'm seeing here is an angle with an opposite side and an adjacent side. And if you can think of a relationship that binds together an angle, an opposite side, and an adjacent side, you should say it right now because you should know that the answer is going to be tangent. Tangent of the angle, which is 54, is equal to opposite over adjacent. We're going back to that basic trigonometry here. So I'm going to multiply 7.5 on either side. And what I get is h equaling 7.5 times tangent of 54. And if I multiply that all together, after I evaluate tangent in the calculator and multiply it by 7.5, I will get 10.32. And that's what this thing is. The height is 10.32. So what does that give me? It gives me 10.32 into here. And when I multiply those things together, I'm going to get 77.4. But remember, this is the area of only one triangle. How many triangles do I actually want? Well, the area of the pentagon, how many, how many triangles are in this pentagon here? If I split from the center, there's a total of five of them. So five times 77.4 is going to get me 387 flat. So I hope that makes sense. I will be back with another example. All right, cool. Let's take a look at this example here. We're going to find out the area of this octagon and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and label some sides here. So this time I'm going to change it up a little bit. This time, instead of giving you the base, I'm actually going to give you the length of this diagonal line right here. I'm going to call him 2. And we're going to try and find the area based off of this. Well, remember, it's always the same thing. I'm going to start off with the exact same process. I'm going to find out the measure of one of these angles. So one of the angles, one of the angles is going to be n minus 2 times 180, which is going to be 8 minus 2 times 180. And at this point, if you're getting fast enough, you can already preemptively divide him by 8. And what you end up getting is you end up getting 135 degrees per angle. So with this guy being 135 degrees, and at this point, you might be getting fast enough to know that that 135 degrees will eventually get cut in half anyway to become 67.5 degrees. Now, if you're not sure how I got that, it's okay. This was originally 135. 135 took apart the whole angle. But this red line right here, cuts that angle in half, giving you 67.5 degrees on one side. And now we're going to draw a vertical line down, and I'm going to go and draw that triangle a little bit larger so we can see him better. This guy is 2, this guy is 67.5, and this guy, is, I'm going to call him X, and this side I'm going to call him H. So the reason why this problem is a little more complicated is because now we have to solve for two sides of this triangle here. Well, from here, if I'm going to solve for x, right, I've got a right triangle here. I've got an angle of 67.5. I've got an adjacent side here. And I've got a hypotenuse of 2. So from here, what trig function can relate the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Well, what I can do is I can go ahead and say, well, that's cosine of 67.5 is equal to x over 2, adjacent over hypotenuse. x is going to be 2 times cosine of 67.5. And again, this one you'll need a calculator for. This is not a special right triangle. So we'll actually have to do uh, the calculation of this. So cosine of 67.5 is going to be 0.38 something, and that's going to be times 2. 
So I'll go and write that down. So that's 0 0.7653. But remember, this side of the triangle here is really only half of the triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to multiply him by 2 again so that I can get the full length of the full base. So when I get that, the base of the triangle, I'll, I'll, call, it, I'll call him B now for base, the base is going to be 1.5307. So that's what this is. It's 1.5307 right there. And all I have to do is just go and find the height. Well, the height is going to be, well, check this out. I'm going to go ahead and reestablish a different relationship. I've got an angle, I've got an opposite side, and I've got a hypotenuse side. Well, what relationship in right triangles establishes or relates angle, opposite, and hypotenuse? Well, that would be sine of 67.5 will get me h over 2. So I multiply 2 on either side, so 2 times sine of 67.5 is equal to h. So if I multiply that in the calculator, so sine of 67.5 and then times 2, I'm going to get 1.8477 is equal to h. And now I've got a base and a height for my triangle. So the area of one of the triangles is going to be 1 half base, which is 1.5307, times the height, which is 1.8477. So let's multiply those out. So you end up getting 1.414, 1.414. But remember, this is the area of just one triangle. How many triangles do we actually have? Well, if we cut him down the middle, what we'll find is we'll find we have a total of eight triangles. So I take that guy and I multiply him by eight, and I end up with the area of the octagon is going to be 11.313. So I'm hoping you're getting used to the pattern of how this goes. Uh, let me pause real quick and I'll be back with how to shortcut these just by a little bit. So to show you the shortcut on how to do this, and it's not even that much shorter, but, uh, but, but uh, I'll go back to the first example here of the hexagon. So if you want to go and copy that example down in your notes again, uh, the example in the first one was a base length of 8. And, uh, and if you look up on Google or whatever it is, sometimes you might find this formula here. The area of a regular polygon, they call it one-half AP, where, where this A is something called, it's, it's a weird word, it's something called the apothem. The apothem. And uh, this guy here, well, he's just the perimeter. Some people find it faster, some people find it a little bit slower, you know, it's up to you, you know, it's just a matter of style. Uh, let's go ahead and define what the apothem is. An apothem, an apothem is defined as a line from the center of a regular polygon at right angles to any of its sides. So, let me go ahead and draw for you what an apothem is. You guys already know what an apothem is. You've seen it. It's this. This thing. It's what we used to call the height of the triangle. Now again, I'm just showing you an alternative method. If you want to use the triangular, uh, the triangular summation, that's fine. In fact, the triangular summation is, in fact, the, uh, the derivation of this formula, 1 half apothem times perimeter. So I'm going to go and derive the formula and show you how this thing came into existence. Because it didn't just come out of nowhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, each side, each side of this whatever polygon this is, I chose a hexagon because it's easy to look at, whatever, uh, whatever base this is, it has a side length of S, a side length of S. So if I was to find the perimeter of this thing, I would take S, so the perimeter would be equal to S, 
right? The, the, the length of the side times the number of sides there are. So P equals S times N. So from here, let's go and find out the area of the triangle. Well, the area of the triangle, the area of the triangle is equal to, and I'll go ahead and actually make that a little bit lighter. That way we can see the area of the triangle here. The area of the triangle is one half base times height times the number of sides there actually were. Well, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and actually move him down a little bit. We know the base's length. The base's length is this guy. We determined him from the beginning of the problem. The base length was S. So we can say A is equal to 1 half S times H times N. Now, using the, uh, using the commutative property of multiplication, I can rearrange the order of the letters saying 1 half, 1 half H times N times S. Or actually, to keep it even more literal, I'll call them S times N. But remember, S times N we established before. He's equal to perimeter. So I can actually make a substitution and say A is equal to 1 half H times P. Well, here's the problem. This H, remember this H is really the height of the triangle. But in the context of this particular polygon now, that's not height. That's like half the height. So what they did was they came up with a word that they could use to replace height because it's not really height anymore and they called him an apothem, which was a line from the center of the regular polygon to any of the right, uh, to form right angles with any of the sides. So this H became an A, so they said capital A for area is equal to one half apothem times perimeter. Sometimes people will find it faster. I'll go and show you the example on, uh, on this particular hexagon here since we already know the answer to this. Um, if we use one half apothem times perimeter on this example, then we already know most of it. It's going to be one half apothem times the perimeter, which is going to be eight times the number of sides. Eight times the number of sides, six sides, is going to be 48. All we have to do is find the apothem's length now. So how do we do that? Well, we go back to our special right triangles. We go back to our right triangle construction here. So you see how it's not much faster, but some people like this idea a little bit more. So I'm going to go and find out the sum of, or the total of one angle. One angle is going to be n minus 2, so 6 minus 2 times 180, divided by the number of triangles is going to be 6. That's going to get me 120, but I'm going to divide that by 2 to get me 60, because this line cuts this vertex in half. This gets me a 4 right here. On a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, I end up with 4 rad 3 as my apothem's length. So this becomes 4 rad 3 on the inside here. These guys kind of cancel, so I end up with A equals 2 rad 3 times 48. These guys multiply, A equals 96 rad 3. It's up to you. Whichever one you think is faster is going to be whatever you choose. I will ask you every time you ask a homework question which version you like more. Uh, and I think that will wrap it up for this video. I will have another video with a bunch of examples of this, and I will see you in the next one.